Hi, I'd like to welcome you to another Todd Talk, where we take teaching theory and turn it into teaching practice. What we're going to be talking about today is the depth and complexity icon of language of the discipline. So first and foremost, what does language of the discipline mean? You kind of break this down. So when you look at language, it is the vocab, it is the terms, it is the words, it is the phrases that you would use. You look at discipline, discipline can mean lots of different things. Discipline can mean a hobby. It can mean a job. Uh, when it comes to school, it could very specifically be math or reading or social studies. All of these disciplines have language that are specific to them. And what, what might mean one thing in one discipline might mean something completely different in another. So let me give you an example. So I wrote this word. Love. And I'm trying to figure out the meaning of this word. It's going to be really important to match it to the discipline. So for example, if I am a school guidance counselor, Love is going to mean showing affection or showing uh, you care from somebody, showing that, that a person is, is wanted and needed. That is what love means to a school guidance counselor and to a lot of other people for that matter. But if I were a professional tennis player, love means nothing. Literally, it means zero. It's in keeping score. Love is how you indicate the score of zero. So you can see how this word, which is part of our language, can have very different meaning depending upon what discipline it is that you're talking about. And again, there are, there are specific disciplines that, that, we, that in the classroom where kids will learn things. So for example, if we're looking at math, you might have terms such as add subtract, fraction. If students are going to learn math, it's really important that they understand these terms because it changes things. So for example, if I take these numbers, and I have them in a math problem, and I add an addition, that's going to equal six. However, if I say the word subtract, then I'm going to get minus two. And if it's a fraction, it may be two fourths. So depending upon the language that I use in that discipline, it's going to change the activities that I would be doing. So it's really important that students get to know that there is different language depending upon the discipline and how there are some specific to certain things. And one example that I always use with kids is the idea of Minecraft. Uh, Minecraft is a game that a lot of kids play and they understand these terms, uh, even though I may not. So one of these is mob. So in Minecraft, that is a term that indicates uh, a, a mob of people that may be attacking your village or whatever. Uh, you look at a, a term such as crafting table, where I, I don't know what, I can know what crafting is, I know what table is, I can kind of use through context clues, but if you're a Minecraft fan, that's where you build everything. That is where you are able to construct all of your, your things. And then there's, there's nether portal. So these are very specific to that particular discipline. If I use those outside of that discipline, you, uh, you might not know what it's referring to. Uh, even as teachers, we have very specific language to our discipline of teaching. So for example, if you use the, if you say to a, uh, someone, IEP, we as teachers know that this is an individualized education plan that is for our special ed students. Other people might not have a clue. I might think it's IEP. They have no idea. But language of the discipline covers a few things. It covers the specialized vocabulary that's needed to understand whatever topic it is that you're learning about. 
It is abbreviations such as IEP, could be symbols such as addition, could be key phrases to understand what the topic is about. What are common tools, skills, or tasks that these experts in these disciplines do? So what does that look like when they're using these terms or these phrases? And how does that affect what they're going to be do? So for example, if I use the word draft, there are several different instances depending on the discipline. So for example, if you are a writer, a draft may mean a first draft or a final draft or a revised draft. Could be lots of different things. If you are an architect, drafting means that you are drawing out a plan. You're drafting. If you are in motor uh, race car driving, drafting means getting behind another person and letting them pull you along and using the wind resistance to gain on them and slingshot around them. So if you're in football, or baseball or sports, a draft means recruiting people or getting people from and bringing them into the sport. You're drafting them. So this one word, depending upon which discipline you're using, has several instances of what it might mean and the skills or actions that you might do. So if I tell that writer, I need a second draft, they know what that means. They're going to take their first draft and revise it to make it better as a second draft. If I tell an architect to draft me a, a uh, plan for a school, then they know that means drawing the plan out and making sure that I have everything available to make it clear. So it's going to be these, this language of the discipline is really important to understand and for kids to understand that you have to think about the context of that language. It's not just about the language itself. You might know how the word is defined. But under the context of the discipline, it's going to change the meaning of that word. And this is where we get that deeper thinking, where kids are not just thinking about the surface level of what does the word mean. If I put love up here, 99% of people would say this means, you know, you know, loving somebody or hugging them or kissing them or whatever. But there may be that 1% that says it means nothing. Another example is submarine. So if I said the term submarine to a student, they would say, oh, well, it's a, it's a big mechanical thing that uh, floats or uh, goes underneath the water and has a periscope and can take people, uh, sailors certain ways. You might ask another person, they might say, you know what? It's two pieces of bread with meat in between and some cheese, a submarine sandwich. So depending upon the context, you're going to get two very different answers, but you have to provide that context for students in help them to understand that there is a context to this particular language. What does this language of the discipline mean to you in the classroom as a teacher? Well, again, it depends on the context of the discipline that you're teaching. So if you're teaching science and you use the word table, then students need to understand that a table does not mean a four legs and a top to it. A table might mean the periodic table, or it might mean a method of graphing information or data using a table. So it's going to change what, what it is that they, depending upon if they're, if they're in woodworking, then a table is going to be just a table. Like I described before with four legs and a top. So it can mean lots of different things. So you need to figure out what is the language of your particular discipline and make sure that students understand this so that they know when you refer to something, they know what you're talking about. How I do this, how I help students to try to understand this is we do a project called a career cheat sheet. And career cheat sheet is students look at a career that they're interested in. So like maybe they're interested in being a veterinarian or maybe they're interested in being a teacher or a singer and they research this career. And then they find out the, the language that goes with that particular career. So for example, if I use the word level, I want you to think about what profession you think that might refer to. I'm going to give you a couple more terms to, to kind of give you hints on what that might mean. If I add the term of slice to level, slice and level, what, what career might that be referring to? And then finally, if I add the third term of undercut, so I have, I have level, 
slice and undercut. Those three terms together could go to a lot of different professions or careers. However, all three of them collectively are only going to go into one, and that would be hairdressing. So when you level something, you're leveling, I wouldn't know what that looks like with my hair, but when you level the hair so that it's even, a slice is a certain type of cut that you put on hair. An undercut is the hair underneath the hair that you're cutting back so it doesn't grow real big and poofy. So understanding that particular language is going to be really important because if you were, if you were a carpenter and you use the word term level, then you're talking about making sure that something is flat and that it's even kind of a similar, but not exactly the same definition of that. And so students will pick a career that they're interested in. They'll research that career. I add another layer of that to where they interview someone in that career and they try to identify 10 to 20 vocab terms that are specific to that particular discipline, language that is specific to the discipline that they can attribute to that particular career. And if someone were going into that career, it would be really important that they understand that particular language. And this is just done to help students gain, gain an understanding of why it's important to, to have this language of the discipline and how the, the, the depth of, it's not just about the definition of the word, it's putting it together with the context of what it means. So this is the icon that goes along with language of the discipline. And so how depth and complexity works is you teach them the terms and they understand what it means. And then you pull away the words and you just use the icon. And by putting that icon in a place, it is going to trigger in that student that depth of thinking. So if you, ha if you have a term that is specific to a very, um, to, to discipline, then you would maybe want to put this icon of ellipse uh, on, in a place where students understand, I need to think about this a little bit deeper. It's not at the surface level that I think it is. It's going to be something else. And so using this icon, this lip icon, is going to get students to think about the context of the word being used, not just the definition of that word.